This new Blood Wave build is doing over double the damage of the old build, and it gets that damage out much quicker. This build is significantly better for farming than the old version, and it's able to hit for over 3 billion damage very regularly. This build deals tremendous amounts of damage, and it's so good for farming. So what has changed? The biggest change is the adjustment of adding the Aspect of Ultimate Shadow in exchange for the Aspect of Grasping Veins. While the Aspect of Grasping Veins is incredibly powerful, it requires a ramp time to the build that you really don't want whenever you're speed farming. So we replace that with the Aspect of Ultimate Shadow, which turns the, the Blood Wave into a Darkness skill. By turning it into a Darkness skill, we're able to run Aspect of the Damned on an Amulet, which for me right now is already a 75% multiplier. This goes all the way up to 83, and then it's also going to allow the Skeletal Warrior Reaper Sacrifice, which means that basically instead of getting some crit, we're instead getting the Shadow Damage Multiplier. And because we're able to cap out our crit anyway, this ends up just being like a straight up, so this is 30% now, and then it's getting 60 more percent from Memento Mori. So this ends up being over a 50% multiplier in and of itself. But the extra damage doesn't stop there. We're also getting access to Gloom for another 18% damage multiplier. Then we're getting access to Terror, where we're getting two 18% multipliers, because I have three eggs for my amulet. Uh, normally it would be two 9% multipliers that are independent and multiply together for even more ginormous amounts of damage. And this means on the amulet, we're able to get extra things like, you know, ranks of terror that amplify the damage even more because terror is a lot better than something like Cleft Blood and it's a lot better than something like, you know, amplify damage. So this, you end up being able to run an extra huge multiplier on your necklace as well. So in the end, you're getting all of these extra multipliers. You're getting all of these huge things that are buffing up the build and you can start to see why it's doing so much more damage. And by dropping Grasping Veins, we're able to get a significantly faster ramp time meaning we're able to do our damage much quicker which allows the build to be even better for speed farming before we can talk about necromancer's best build for season five we first have to talk about one of the best ways to code which is today's sponsor boot.dev now if you don't know i was actually a software developer a back-end developer before i started doing youtube and twitch so i have a lot of experience that i can attest this is a good product so with this product you're going to learn back-end development python and go so you're going to learn python and go in the context of back-end web development and what's great about it is it's an online self-paced and it's an RPG style learning environment. It feels like an RPG game while you're learning to code, which is super sick. It's gonna make coding a lot more fun and a lot more interesting. And you're gonna get your hands on products right away and you're gonna start making things that are useful and you're gonna start making code that can run right away. Now, I can attest to this next point, myself and a lot of my friends are software developers or were, and the median out, uh, salary for backend developers in 2023 in the US was $100,000. And you can make that work in remote. This is pretty sweet. And I can tell you myself, my boss and a lot of people I used to work with did not have college degrees. They were just developers. So you can get right in. And what's great is with this product, you're going to earn XP, you're going to get levels, achievements, and you're going to complete quests. And there's actually a leaderboard, which Diablo still doesn't have. So you're gonna, you can participate in that. So this is a really cool product. If you're interested in it, definitely check it out using our promo code and you can get 25% off your first payment. If you're interested in boot.dev, check out a link for it in the description below and use promo code Goblin Inc. to get 25% off your first purchase. We're also gonna be able to run the Abyssal Glyph, which is going to give us a huge amount of damage. It's gonna give us a 10% straight up multiplier as well as a 7.2 with my current Glyph level, which adds quite a bit of extra damage to the build. We're also going to be running a new stat on our ring, which is chance to apply vulnerable on hit. Because we don't have any other source of vulnerable, we're going to be getting it through this item. And you might be wondering, why aren't we running vulnerable on corpse tendrils? Well, you can actually. If you want to play vulnerable, it's totally fine. But if for speed farming, it is way more reliable to instead play blighted corpse tendrils so you can get blood orbs on hit. This means that like, if you know, like, especially if you've been playing this build, you ever run in those situations where you like cast a blood wave and then you forget to pick up the orbs to go to the next pack? Blinded corpse tendrils will allow you to just generate a corpse with reap and then cast corpse tendrils and you get the orbs to reset your cooldown so you can still kill the pack. Technically, if you're trying to do like the hardest content possible, playing corpse tendrils ends up being better, but blinded corpse tendrils allows you to have a much more consistent build. When you are um, pushing, you will still want this chance to apply vulnerable on your ring. That's because just the corpse tendrils alone isn't enough to get 100% uptime, whether you're talking about bosses or um, AoE. So it ends up being significantly better to have this roll. It ends up being like maybe 10 or 15% damage overall. So absolutely worth the stats. I also want to talk about the stat uh, chance to restore primary resource that we talked about in the other video where you're playing with Great Feast. Well, in this version of the build, because we're able to run Damned, we actually end up dropping Great Feast because it ends up getting outperformed by all of these other aspects. And because of that, we are going to be playing 
um, a different stat, just like additive overpower on the weapon is instead of chance to restore primary resource because restoring resource is no more, no more a problem. At this point, just the base regen is enough to keep up Decrepify, which is all that matters. And speaking of Decrepify, I've also swapped the build to be always running the Aspect of Cursed Aura, and I'm never playing the Sever Mobility anymore. That's because the auto-applied Curse ends up being significantly better for farming than the auto-cast Sever because it allows us to just run up into a pack, cast our Tidal Wave, and then just keep moving. This allows us to play with a lot more momentum and speed, even though we lack some of the mobility that other builds have. We're able to, we're still able to movement speed cap, we're running around a 200% movement speed, and the auto-applied curse just ends up, I think, overall being better. Now, there's one other thing I really want to talk about, is that there's a new, well, an old Uber Unique that's currently disabled, and that Uber Unique is the Shroud of False Death. This item is completely broken in Blood Wave, especially in Shadow Blood Wave. The reason for this is because that um, chest piece is going to give you plus one to all passives. Now, this chest piece is currently disabled, but once it becomes re-enabled, this is going to be over a 50% damage multiplier for Blood Wave, which is crazy. This build is going to go from hitting three to four billion to hitting like six to seven billion. This build is going to do ginormous amounts of damage. And that's because, you know, we have Tides of Blood here, right? Which is 10% per point. We have Coles Blood, which is 6% per point. We have Gloom, which is 6% per point. Terror, which is like 18, like, whatever percent per point. I don't want to do the math right now. But you can see, you know, Frailty is is 5% per point. Momentum Mori is like, what it would, this is like 9% per point or something, 10% per point. And you can start to see how all of this adds together and adds ridiculous amounts of damage to the build. It's also going to make the build significantly tankier because it's going to enable standalone to go all the way up to 24%. It's going to bump up uh, Death's Embrace by another rank, giving us even more damage reduction. And all of these pieces are going to come together. It's going to give us extra armor from Spiked Armor. Once that Uber Unique is re-added, this build is going to go from like solid like A-tier build to a legitimate S-tier build that's going to be pushing up to close to pit 100. That, that Uber Unique is really what's going to take this build over the edge. I'll let you guys know when it's finally re-enabled. But you can start to see with all of these different pieces coming together why this new Shadow version of the build is so freaking powerful. And once you add in the Shroud of False Hope, the Shadow build is going to be even further ahead of the normal Blood version. And luckily, it's very easy to swap. If you're already playing the old ver Blood version, you just swap your aspects, swap the Book of the Dead, and you're good to go. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys like Shadow Wave. I'm having a blast with this build, and it's able to clear hard content. I'm excited for Shroud of False Death to get added, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out, everybody.